Good morning, students. So, uh, any doubt in the yesterday's class? Uh, why it is coming like this? You are just You you tried. You taken print. Check. Taken photo. Huh? Yes. Yes. Uh, while projection also, I think lens uh, full screen is not coming. Small. I think we'll get leave. 
So in yesterday's class, we were uh, discussing about the secondary storage devices. Uh, we started with the, the various types of secondary storage devices. So your second unit is uh, based on disk storage and basic file structures. So how we are storing the data in the disk. And uh, because uh, we deal with the database, no? so database uh, usually in olden days, they were storing the data. The database, uh, We are using large amount of data, so that uh, during that time, the memory is uh, costly one, and the, most of the computers are with less memory space. They have only uh, RAM also very less, and uh, hard disk also capacity also very less. If you see the old computers, uh, say the Pentium computers or uh, Pentium 1, 2, 3, the memory is maximum, uh, say, 1 GB. The RAM will be maximum 8 GB or 4 GB RAM. They will add extra slots, uh, SDD slots they will add for additional memory. So the memory was costly 10 to 15 years before. So the file storage and the disk storage memory places an important role. Time and memory plays an important role. So in your uh, database management system, we are studying the uh, topics like the disk storage and uh, file uh, structures. What, what are the different file structures where we can store our data? So here we are going to discuss the topics like introduction to file storage and uh, uh, disk, then uh, buffering of blocks. You might have heard buffers. Buffer means it is also memory where we can store the data, temporary memory storage. I think you might have studied different types of memories, buffer memory, temporary memory, virtual memory. Nowadays we are using cloud. So it means uh, it's a place, uh, temporary memory space. Placing file records on the disk. So once you create them, some table where we can store our data properly, because once you store the data, we need some technique to retrieve the data. Storing, uh, storing is also important. Storing it permanently is also important. The same way retrieving the data is So storing the data and again retrieving the data from the stored memory place uh, for future reference is also places an important role. So placing file records on disk and retrieving the data is an important topic. So with that topic also we're going to discuss and the various file operations what we can perform. Say storing the data, reading the data, updating the data, modifying the data, seeking the data. 
seeking uh, particular data all those things places an important role so we'll uh, discuss about the various file operations then file files for of unordered records so if your record if your file is uh, not uh, in ordered form so if it is not indexed properly and uh, how we can make use of the heap file storage so it means we'll use hash functions or we'll use the heap uh, heap means uh, you might have heard binary tree so what is the difference between binary tree and the heap structure so there is a minor difference so it will look like an we can uh, from the binary tree b tree b plus tree we can go for heap so it means uh, in a ordered form uh, so that we can easily access through the hash function we can easily access the uh, data so heap storage is an uh, important topic like hash functions uh, for accessing storing and retrieving the data the same way heap uh, files also places an important role for random access and files of ordered records if your data is in a ordered form with a sequence of numbers or indexing then if it is in the sorted form a to z or 1 to 100 like that so it is easy to access through the index number so these are the concepts we are going to discuss with respect to the file storage then we discussed with the storage hierarchy so in storage array hierarchy we know the different types of secondary storage devices like primary storage we we to discuss about the ram within ram itself uh, we have static ram, ram and dynamic ram static ram is uh, very high speed dynamic ram is used for uh, storing the uh, during uh, the processing time in static ram only the passwords your operating system data all those things will be stored then we discussed the territory storage so it deals with the Uh, portable types of secondary storage devices like optical disk CDs, uh, CD-ROMs, read-only memories, digital DVDs, digital versatile disk, read uh, readable DVD, read-only uh, DVD, read-write DVDs. Like that, we have different varieties of DVD. Then we discussed the memory hierarchy and storage devices. So the primary storage level, we have static RAM and dynamic RAM. static ram is used along uh, within it's available within the cpu and uh, my main memory is called dynamic ram it is low cost versatile and low speed compared to static ram and if you take the second storage uh, territory storage we used uh, uh, magnetic disk cds dvds all those things then we discuss the flash drive or uh, we will call it as usbs where it is a portable one small in size it can uh, nowadays uh, it's available 32 gb 128 gb like that so it is easy to carry and if you, we have two types of flash memories nand and nor flash based on the type of logic uh, circuits i think you might have studied them and or not and means multi, uh, logical multiplication is called and logical addition is called or not is complementary and the combination of not and and is called nand just the uh, complement of and is called nand nand gate and nor gate is complement of or gate so if both the inputs are zero then only uh, the output will be zero in case of or if any one uh, input is one the output will be one in case of or because it is logical addition but in case of and this logical multiplication if any one input is zero then the total output will be zero only and the flash drives also used in uh, cameras mp3s mp4 players cell phones as plus pdas personal digital assistants so and the nand flash drives high storage capacity of 8 gb to 64 gb so the flash drives or pen drives are based on the concept of nand so where the nand gates will be used to store the data and uh, in most of the mobile phones mp3 players mp4 players and uh, PG, pds flash drives we are using the uh, they are all uh, secondary storage devices where we can store the songs or videos and other things 100% of gb slower than the magnetic disk slow, low less cost more storage capacity so if you take the flash drives 
the memory is um, cost is less and the speed of uh, magnetic disk is high speed memory de device but uh, flash drives are low cost and low storage so they can store more data but the speed is very less and if you take the magnetic tape used for archiving and backup storage of data so if you have large amount of data especially in my mainframe computers as well as in the core banking where they are using sap people saw uh that they will have customers throughout the world so they need to maintain backups they need to maintain uh, uh other um, uh, they they will go for the data warehousing so there and all they are using still they are using the magnetic tapes uh, tape uh, jukeboxes and up to contain bank of tapes that can be automatically loaded into the tape devices becoming popular in territory storage to hold terabytes of data so magnetic disk are very high in capacity the speed also very high it's mostly used in uh, the business sector share market and uh, most of the trading centers uh, ibm mainframe uh, softwares and people soft uh, and uh, most of the lms systems uh, they are all using magnetic tapes then we uh, up to this i think we discussed in the previous class here this particular table gives you an idea uh, to compare the various types of mem memories based on the type capacity access time maximum bandwidth and uh, price of the uh, product so if you take the main memory ram it is always costly and the memory space will be based on the size of the memory the cost will automatically increase and the access time is very high very high speed because it is available within the cpu microprocessor cpu itself and uh, maximum bandwidth is uh, 35 gb per second and we can process access and process the data in nanoseconds and the cost will be from 100 dollars to uh, 20000 dollars compared to all other memories memories still uh, till date the ram cost is very high based on the ram cost, uh, cost only uh, mobile phones even the um, players laptops uh, tabs uh, whatever may be the brand of the Uh, product the cost is uh, fixed based on the ram capacity and if you take the flash memory ssd nowadays uh, ssd may, many of the laptops are coming with ssd what is that ssd solid state devices so uh, ssd is uh, compared to the cpu uh, compared to the hard disk ssd speed is very high and that can stand uh, life also very good so nowadays most of the computers laptops are coming with ssd memory so it is called flash memory the mem memory capacity ranges from 64 gb to 1 terabyte and here the processing speed processing time it takes to, uh, to retrieve and uh, store back is uh, 50 mic uh, microseconds nanoseconds means 10 to the power of 9 microsecond means 10 to the power of 3 There is a my micro na micro six sa okay micro is six millisecond is three okay so the same way if you take the flash memory USB stack so in a flash memory we have two types SSD is mostly used in uh, mobile phones as well as in laptops and flash uh, flash memory USB stick pens um, memory stick is the that what we are using memory USB port that is um, we have two types. so the processing the here also the processing time is 100 uh, microseconds and the cost is less when compared to the ssd so here it will take from 2 dollars to 200 dollars the magnetic disk uh, processing speed is microseconds uh, my uh, magnetic uh, disk can store large amount of data so the st storage starts from 400 gb to 8 terabytes and the cost is uh, 70 dollars to 500 dollars so the same way we have optical storage like cds and uh, magnetic tapes and other other kind of uh, memory storage so these are all um, other than the main memory all are secondary storage devices okay only the main memory ram is primary storage the remaining ssd usb stack magnetic disk magnetic tape optical disk cds everything is secondary storage it means that it is not part of the microprocessor then if you take the storage organization of uh, databases most databases are stored permanently on magnetic disk 
uh, second is storage for following reasons so if you go store your data files databases in magnetic disk it is permanent so if you say save your data in table it is permanent you are not saving your data in files or in a uh, tables once you come out from the program the data will not be available so if you are writing a c program or java program or python program you are giving some input you are seeing the output on the monitor if you just come out from the program the data input and output will not be saved so if you create files in your program or if you use database backend in your program then only the data will be stored permanently so the same way once you store some data in the files as well as in the tables you need to store the data it will be available in primary memory or in your c drive or d drive so after long time you can transfer it to some secondary storage device also say for example if you are downloading an mp3 so you can choose the option the downloads can be stored in your primary memory ram or it can be stored in your memory card sd card so the same way while uh, doing any processing you cannot save all your tables and files data long time in uh, main memory that will waste your cost time your efficiency everything so you need to store choose an um, memory place where secondary memory storage where we can store the data very fast access the data fast so the best option is magnetic disk because it provides uh, 500 gb to 1 terabyte and cost also minimal and it can be saved for long time and it's having so many options to storing seeking accessing retrieving the data permanent loss of storage uh, data arises less frequently for disk secondary storage devices so even for pen drives flash memory sometimes it will not work it may get affected by virus even memory also sometimes getting affected so but if you go for disk storage that is magnetic disk storage uh, the volatile uh, the nature of uh, uh, getting affected by viruses lossing of data and uh, because uh, it is in storage it is in well, it's like a very strong storage device we can preserve the data without any virus and other uh, malwares for long time the cost of the storage per unit data is less for disk st secondary storage for primary storage if you store your data in primary storage ram uh, it will slow down your processing so only the basic uh, operations the uh, main version of your operating system important programs the programs which you cannot store in a transfer to secondary storage can alone be stored in primary storage because the cost and usage of memory primary memory is very costly compared to the disk storage so the disk uh, magnetic disk storage devices places an important role while storing retrieving and organizing the large amount of data then if you take the ssd or used for, uh, as alternative for magnetic disk so uh, compared to the next level is ssd the first priority goes to magnetic disk second uh, place is for ssd databases may therefore reside at different levels of the memory hierarchy magnetic tapes used for backing up database because of less cost so the magnetic disk first place second place the ssd uh, memory devices then the magnetic tapes places in third row place and the disk uh, or online devices that can be accessed directly as any time so the same way so the hierarchy of uh, preference based on the cost to time uh, storage volatile can, uh, nature and uh, uh, based on, based on the various parameters they categorized primary storage ram second place is for magnetic disk third place is for ssd fourth place is for magnetic tapes and the fifth place for other secondary storage devices if you take the primary file organizations so once you save your data in files what are the operations basic operations which we can perform on files means the heap file so it is you mainly used for unordered data if your data is in unordered form so there should be some key or hash tag or there should be some uh, method to access say if the students are sitting in the classroom as per the order 1 2 3 order during exam time the students will be play, sitting as per their uh, roll number so uh, as per the attendance the first student name will be in the first place so it means that we can check whether which student is absent absent if the fourth place bench is uh, table uh, desk is free means uh, the particular student is absent but if the students are sitting in non ordered form it is not easy to identify so we need some unique id or some index or some hashtag 
we are using hashtag now if you click on the hashtag it goes to the all references the same way or we need some key primary key or secondary key or we are using the address we will calculate the virtual address as well as the physical address so one of the best method for accessing unordered files unindexed file is key uh, access the second one is for sequential files that will be in ordered form sequential means what one two three in sequential form it will be in the ordered form if it is in ordered sorted form we can go for different methods the same way hash files will have some hash function you will give the value for the hash key you will find out get, get some value the address is the place where the data is saved okay so like postal code a particular postal code will refer to a particular person or if you take the uh, vehicle uh, registration number through the registration number we can get the complete detail about the person who is driving the vehicle so it is like hash file is like it is the uh, it is the notation where we can compute the entire data we can identify the access the data address where it is stored and the same way b trees so b trees what is the concept binary trees yeah the root node will be less left side will have greater values right side will have left nodes will be less than the root node and the right uh, right trees right sub trees will be greater than the left sub tree so like that we have some uh, constraints so uh, based on the constraint if you go in a pre order traversal we will get the complete order say if your data is stored in b tree form so in b trees uh, it's having its own structure so the root node will be uh, greater than the left node and uh, less than the right node so if you go in pre uh, pre order traversal left root right then you will get the sequence so 1 2 3 you will get so like that we can easily once you store the data keep data structure huh? keep the uh, data structure because uh, here we are discussing about uh, how the yeah he yeah in b trees in uh, heap structure no no uh, if you store here heap files means they are storing the data it is in unordered form the data itself it's in unordered form and they are storing the data in heap structure so that we can make the form so we have minimum heap uh, maximum heap uh, the like i think you might have studied in data structure what is the minimum heap I, uh, what is the constraint yeah i think uh, the root node will be the minimum node and in maximum maximum heap the root node will be hmm. so the data is in unordered form but while storing we are following the heap structure so so through the concept uh, the data we can identify this by if it, in the particular list of data if the particular data is highest data then it will be in the root node and if the data is a, a particular data so if you apply the value on the particular formula you will come to know where it is stored so like hash table heap is also a formula where we can retrieve the address physical address where the data is stored but if it is sequential uh, anyhow the data it is in the array form so anyhow it will be in the ordered form 1 2 3 we can make use sorted file means uh, we are using the sorted file we are storing the sorted form so if the value is 1 the corresponding index will be 1 or the array may start from index 0 so just if you increment we can reach the next one the same way for secondary organization of uh, auxiliary access structures allows efficient access to file record based on alternate fields uh, than those that have been used for primary file organization so uh, along uh, along with the primary key to access the data we will make use of another alternative key also where through which we can access the data so the next concept is called buffering of blocks used in main memory to speed up the transfer from disk to main memory so we know very well the buffers are used in between secondary ram uh, rom to ram 
so the data will be available in the room main program will be available in the room once you create a compile your program you will create the object code so the object code will be in the form of move a comma b add a comma add c like that it will be in the object code microprocessor code form so in that in that uh, context uh, we need to store the value of a b c in a particular memory place so initial the initial values will be stored in the buffer while performing the actual process a a plus b the data will be transferred to the registers in the main memory uh, say the accumulator will take the a value and the b register will take the b value the, both the values will be added by the arithmetic and logic unit again the result will be stored in the accumulator once the processing is over the accumulator will transfer the data back to the buffer from buffer the data will be transferred to the secondary storage device so the buffer is a memory place so it is um, uh, less speed compared to main memory high speed compared to the secondary memory so i uh, for that purpose only we are using the buffers so double buffer cpu can start processing a block once uh, it's transferred to main memory is completed at the same time the disk input output processor can be uh, reading and transferring the next block into the different buffer so in a double buffering we are using double buffering or parallel processing or pipeline processing in that case the secondary storage will have the data that will be transferred to the buffer the actual processing will happen in the main memory and the data will be transferred back to the buffer then it will be transferred back to the uh, the corresponding secondary storage device it permits uh, continuous reading or writing of data on con um, consecutive disk blocks which uh, Eliminate the seek time and uh, rotational delay. So, what is the what do you mean the seek time? I think you might have studied in operating system. Seek, but seek time that is going and accessing and doing the process. Say, if you are uh, calling and uh, if you are uploading some data in the Facebook or something, so it takes some time to upload. Or if you are calling and it takes some time to connect. So, uh, when you are placing the request, when you are getting the reply. so the time delay it may be if it is if your uh, computer or system is very fast it will be within, within a second it will be processed if you are using low configuration it will take uh, one minute or two minutes the same way if you are uh, trying to access some network so based on the number of users based on the network coverage it will take some time to connect so that is called uh, seek time and rotational uh, delay means if uh, there is no network no we are not in a uh, traveling so there is some disturbance so it will take some time to get connected so here they are giving you an uh, picture of interface concurrency versus uh, parallel execution so here parallel execution of operations c and d and uh, intermediate concurrency of operations a and b so we are uh, placing the operation uh, a and it takes some some time to go to the processing then say here we are taking an operation in uh, in interrelated concurrency versus parallel execution so in case of uh, it is like a pipeline processing so the uh, value of a is placed in the processor like fetching then it goes to Uh, execution then when the a operation is in execution the b operation comes into pipeline then once a is completed then b is placed for processing but in case of parallel processing both a and b will uh, two concurrent processes will execute the process here uh, it shows the disk blocks input output uh, fill a fill b so the number of instructions executed the seconds say if you take the i value i is the second the time it takes to execute on particular process during the first move of first second uh, a value is stored and uh, the second second i plus 1 the value of b is loaded and um, the third second fill a is happening the, the disk blocks of for processing it process the a then it process b then it process a again it process b so use of two buffers a and b for reading the disk so how the reading and 
writing is happening in the disk storage means it's based on the technology what we are using we are using the disk uh, processing parallelly it will uh, process a and b the same way if you go for uh, disk block input output read process so it initially it will read a then it will uh, read b then it will go for the next again a so parallelly we are doing more than one process say say for example in your uh, laptop if you are opening if you open the word file pdf file one image one youtube video one email uh, is opened so any any window you can go parallelly so in that time everything will be active once you go to the like the multiple inheritance i think you might have studied in java threads so the threads will be created so every thread will be active in your windows operating system so if you are going uh, to a particular uh, youtube then it will start playing once uh, if uh, overlapping is not enabled if you come out from youtube if you go to the word file or if you go to some zoom video player or audio player that will be stopped the next process will start so at a time in case of audio video if you come out from the youtube it that will stop even in your mobile also if you are watching a youtube video if you the uh, go to whatsapp message youtube will stop but if you are playing in music uh, if you are watching a uh, text message in whatsapp the music will play but if you start playing a whatsapp video the music will stop music player will stop so at a time one device can be sometimes if you are uh, attending a zoom class if you are getting a call zoom will overlap and you call also you can able to call sometimes the zoom will cut for audio uh, video will uh, audio will be cut for some time uh, you can attend only the call uh, you come go back to zoom that will continue so the, that is uh, how we are making the settings how we are making the multiple windows to work so in the settings if you do uh, overlapping option even in your mobile also you can see if you enable overlapping or if you enable the notification uh, based on the so the all those things will comes uh, into this uh, multiple buffering and uh, uh, dual processing core processing concept so how this buffer management uh, is happening means what is the time now nine okay we have another 10 minutes <coughs> we should also complete the uh, was in the complete power only <coughs> so if you take the power management buffer management the buffer manager use the available main memory storage as a buffer pool so it means that the available may memory buffer memory taken is will be taken as an pool pool means we have multiple choice you can pick anything so if you go uh, there is a uh, bas basket with n number of products you can pick any product based on your choice so which has a collection of pages so here the memory buffer memory will be available and the primary memory is used for processing and your data will be available in the secondary storage so the secondary storage data can be put into the buffer as a pool of memory space and you can pick any data and that can be used for processing the size of the shared buffer pool is controlled by the dbs so database administrators can control the which data can be stored in buffer which data cannot be stored we can give the priority and there are two kinds of buffer managers so the first one is one controls the main memory directly directly as the most uh, rdbms so if you take the relational database management systems uh the memory uh, main memory will uh, directly control uh, will give the rights because uh, whatever available in the buffer can be transferred to main memory for processing so the main memory will restrict which data will come into the buffer as per that say if you want to go and meet any vip there will be some secretary so the sec secretary or personal pa he is like buffer so if you if he allows then only you can go and if he gives the appointment then only you can uh, because the vip or the someone uh, say say for example you are uh, going to meet an minister so he will be having personal secretary so uh, all his appointments uh, or will be fixed by the secretary only so he, even if you have the appointment prior appointment also if the secretary says the person didn't come even if you are waiting on outside also you cannot meet the person 
because the vip will not come and check whether you are sitting outside or not and whatever call you make to the, the person that will be taken uh, that will be um, accessed by the secretary only so here the buffer is an person who controls the main memory so the main memory has to give access rights to the buffer and the buffer according to the access rights the buffer will take the data from the secondary storage so that is one type the second one is the second one allocates buffers in virtual memory so virtual memory means uh, you can say your memory capacity is only 8 gb or if your memory capacity is only 1 tb in virtual memory if you go on you can even you can store 2 tb of data also so it is just imaginary memory space just you will create in the logical form physically the memory will not be available logically we can store huge amount of data and the the law based on the logic data data will be available like uh, but cloud is logical as well as physical but the virtual means only logical which allows the uh, control of transfer to operating system the operating system in turn controls so through the operating system we are creating the virtual memory space you might have studied physical memory and uh, logical memory that is uh, virtual memory allocation and which buffers are actually in main memory and which one or on this under the control of operating system most commonly used so if you physically use the buffer the buffer uh, what data it can store will be controlled by the main memory but if you go for virtual virtual memory we can store huge amount of data that is created and controlled by the operating system what we are using so any doubt with respect to buffer management buffer memory is an memory in between main memory to the secondary memory whatever data we want to process that data will go to the secondary storage to the buffer then the actual data will be loaded in the ram for processing again the data will be transferred back to buffer buffer to the secondary storage and in buffer itself we have two types one is physical buffer the access, which data we can store in the physical buffer memory space is controlled by the main memory but if you go for buffer of virtual memory concept we can store huge amount of data that is depending upon the operating system what we are using it may be windows or unix or linux or ios depending upon the operating system what we are using we can create the virtual memory space so that is uh, about buffer management i think you might have studied all those things in operating system data structures even in first year uh, first year uh, organization uh, introduction to computer organization also you might have studied all the all put together they are giving in with respect to database management system so i think the introduction to uh, principles of uh, program problem solving so that also you might have studied the storage basic uh, same memory concept hierarchy of memories accessing speed types of memories the same way operating systems hierarchy priority of uh, the memories all those things so the goal of using buffer manager is to maximize the probability that the requested page is found in the main memory so through the buffer Uh, because any whatever we, uh, we are transferring to main memory that will go to secondary memory to buffer buffer to uh, main memory so the base stage waiting time processing time of main memory is avoided so uh, if uh, why the vips are having a personal secretary means if they are directly involved their time energy everything will be wasted so their time and the, is a very costly compared to the pas or the secretaries so the secretaries they will schedule and they will uh, allow as per the order so the same way we are using the buffer memory so that we can avoid the usage and wastage of time of main memory in case of uh, reading a new disk block from disk to find a page or to replace that will uh, cause the least harm to the sense that it will not be required shortly again so based on the need so uh, buffer will check whether the data what we are transferring to main memory is necessary or not whether it is going to be used immediately or not so because based on the object code only the next instruction the program counter will take care of which in the, what is the next instruction which is to be executed so that's what in ram we have uh, program counter um, flag register zero flag sign flag so many flag registers we have so many other registers also supporting the uh, main memory so that the priority can be made and uh, the sequence of actions can be completed as per the order so that the waste stage uh, say you might have uh, 
in operating system you'll have date logs uh, seek time all those things so that uh, that will be avoided the, all those concept buffer concept is introduced in uh, main memory to avoid to sequence the process to uh, increase the speed efficiency cost everything Uh, in case of reading a new disk block, so if you want to read and uh, your so you already stored and data in a uh, disk block, so from the block of data you are going to read. So say for example, it's like uh, reading a particular page in the memory space. So you will take the block of data. That data may be in immediate use of the main uh, main memory or not. So randomly we cannot go and read any data. So the uh, next data to be processed by the main memory is that particular block. That data alone, say in a block of, uh, say we have n number of blocks, 100 blocks. We cannot uh, read all the 100 blocks that will waste to the main memory. As well as buffers, buffer memory also, uh, time and the memory will be wasted. So the buffer, what it will do, it will check which is the next instruction to be used by the main processor. Say only we need the 10th block. That is the actual data we need for processing. So only the 10th block alone can be go, uh, accessed and that will be transferred to the main memory where the 10th uh, block is in uh, need for processing, actual processing. So that unnecessary data will be avoided, entering uh, into the main memory can be avoided. Replay. Uh, replay here what they are telling, to find a page to replace that will cause the least swamp in the sense that will not be required shortly again. So. Say, I think you might have studied uh, the operating system uh, to avoid the uh, accessing time, seek time, to improve the efficiency, throughput, uh, least to these, uh, save some files while uh, uh, cleaning or uh, checking for virus in your mobile, it will show these are the files not used for more than one month, you want to delete. These are the large files available in your memory, you want to delete. Or these are the, uh, say it will show, it will give you the priority. So if a particular uh, app is not used for six months, uh, junk files, uh, temporary files, uh, if you while cleaning your uh, uh, mobile or laptop, it will list out junk files, temporary files, least used files, and uh, unused files, unused apps, duplicated files, duplicated videos, so that, so that uh, duplication can be eliminated, unused can be eliminated. So that we are, uh, that, we, that is occupying memory space, that is slowing your processor, that is creating harm to a pro. No, no need for having multiple files, same photo 10 times, no, not necessary. So that you can delete. The same way temporary files you can delete. And unnecessary blocks, uh, say the, what is that? Uh, your uh, notifications as well as um, unnecessary, whatever you feel, unused. So that's what in operating system you might have seen, uh, least uh, frequently used to replace page replacement policy or on what basis we are choosing a particular operation, least recently used, uh, cyclic reuse uh, to avoid the deadlock, to avoid, uh, if you've gone through the operating system, efficiency, throughput, all those things, uh, to avoid the deadlock as well as uh, to avoid the slow, slowdown process, we will be using all those techniques, page replacement policies, duplications, all those things. So all those things are taken care by the buffer. So we will say the uh, temporary files are in buffers only. As well as uh, say other, uh, now nowadays we are getting so many, uh, say the user, uh, so if I'm seeing a particular type of video, it will give the ads with respect to that. If I'm searching for a new mobile, it will show, uh, new mobiles uh, uh, released will come into, so the users uh, statistics, uh, so the social, uh, our behavior will be recorded accordingly. The uh, ads will, billboards will come into picture. So billboards are nothing but uh, they will scan our nature, age, cost, everything. Accordingly, based on our interest, it will show the recent arrivals. So that will motivate customer uh, statistics. Buying uh, nature will be analyzed. So you go through the concepts. I think I will upload it or I will upload the module two. You need to you just to go through the content, whatever we discussed so far. So if you have any doubt, you'll uh, ask me in the next class. Okay, all of you mentioned your attendance in the chat box.
Ma'am, unit one PPT, can you please send them? What? Unit one PPT or material? No, unit one PPT, I already uploaded, no? Okay, thank you. Bridge classroom, I already uploaded. Bridge course, TLEB, two textbook, one reference book. And I think assignment, uh, it's in the PPT. Unit one PPT itself, you can find the assignment one. I think assignment one not. I, once again, I will check it out. I think uploaded uh, last week itself. Because uh, it's uh, deals with uh, DBMS, RDBMS, OO DBMS, OR DBMS. I will check it out. If it's not uploaded, I will once again upload. I think, and one more thing, we have two, two Google Classroom, one based on uh, Jane University, one more uh, Google Classroom with a uh, personal ID. So I don't know in which I uploaded, I will check it out. Okay, all of you mentioned your uh, attendance in the chat box. So you go through the PPTs. If you have, I will upload today uh, unit module two also. If you have any doubt, ask me in the next class. You have any doubt clarification class on Saturdays? No. So on or now? Uh, that is on or off? Off now. More power is more power. Okay, those who answer can leave the class. Varun V, Amina Begum, Jayadita. Palini, Mandava, Pragash, Santosh Kumar, yes. Okay, mention your attendance. Yeah, mention your attendance. Okay, Shaikh Hina, Shur Anil Sai, Harshavardhan, Vishnu Reddy, Vijayan, Mani Manasa, Akif, Arvind Gauda, Shail Biswal, Rahul Kumar Shah, Jayan K, Shashang Ja, Olivia, Shadvi Kar, Sandosh Raj, Nitish Singh, Tanvir. Okay, all of you mentioned your attendance. Those who gave attendance can leave the class.
okay all of you are shot b answer to your attendance nitish singh jayant okay i will end the class